thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, so this is going to be the first of our set of weekly meetings. Um, and let me just share some stuff that we're you know, trying to put together uh, for the next sessions. So um, let me share my screen first. Um, so, cool. And let me see if I can see all of you. Okay. All right, so um, first of all, um, so um, I sent you on the email um, uh, uh, at the end of it, in the signature, there's a link to this Liber Arstats Club schedule, um, which uh, basically you know, is brand new. Uh, like if you want to see what we did in the past, uh, a lot of it is on Twitter, but it's not all available. Um, now, there's some um, main links here to check at the top. Um, so uh, we have like our onboarding website that we made uh, last year when, when um, we hired someone new at Andrew's group to try to get them up to speed, but um, uh, it's not updated. Um, and, but that's what we have right now. There's the Libre Access Club website that I'll show a little bit in more detail. And then we have a Twitter account. Um, and we also have a code of conduct and I'll go over that in a little bit. But the link is there too. Now, uh, this is a fairly simple um, cool uh, spreadsheet. Has the dates, we'll have the links to the meetings um, um, as I generate them. And then I'll put the recordings of the sessions. Right now, these are mostly links to uh, Zoom, uh, but um, uh, um, but like in the future, they, we could, might change them for uh, for YouTube. Um, there's a little bit of like the software art packages, the topic, and some links to materials. So in this particular case, this link over here opens the Google Doc where I'll be putting um, comments and things like that for today. Um, and um, instead of, because I mean, the, in earlier sessions uh, this month, I was putting stuff on Slack, but then not everyone is on the same Slack channel or stuff like that. So this is a bit more, um, requires less uh, maintenance um, from the user's perspective. Now, some of the stuff that we have in the past, um, two weeks ago, we met and talked about Reprex, which is an R package for creating small reproducible examples. And this is really important when you want to ask for help. Um, and so we won't go over that anymore right now. Um, and so in the past we had a meeting, so let me open the our club's website. Um, so, you know, we created this as a way to like um, learn more about R um, while, you know, doing it at work. And the idea was to try to stay a bit updated with R because we call it like continuous R sets learning because there's always new things to learn. Um, just to spend a bit of time to talk about things we found on the web that could be interesting. Um, um, it has, we have a couple of blog posts. And so one of them that uh, 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 could be of, uh, of interest to people today is this R101, which was um, uh, greeted by a, former member of the club um, um, by Carrie Wright. Um, and so she talks about like different things to get started with R. Um, I won't go over this today, but that, you know, it's on the website if you want to read this blog post. Um, and as you can see, we haven't really written much in a while. Um, Quick question. In the blog post, does it also have installation information? The quick look looked like it just said if you already have it installed and stuff for new new users. Yeah, so this one doesn't. This blog post by Carrie Wright, I don't think, talks about installation. Um, there's other resources for that, uh, but I mean, um, it talks a little bit about like different R classes and different type of functions you can use. So it's just one of many primers that exist out there for getting started with R. Um, now, um, 
The next thing is a code of conduct, which is linked to from uh, uh, the Google Sheet. And this one uh, is basically something we adapted from a conference, uh, our open site 2018, that they adapted from other people too. Um, um, we might need to adapt this in the future too, but the basic idea is um, we want people to, to feel comfortable in, in the sessions to um, something that is uh, uh, really detrimental in the coding community in general is when people uh, tell others that like what they're doing is uh, dumb or too, or, or they say like, oh, this is a very simple thing. You should know it already and uh, things like that. Um, um, it's such a, uh, a common thing in, in, uh, in, the, in, in the coding culture and like people really get into fights about because everyone has the strongest opinions, and uh, but they get into fights a lot. And so um, there's this person, for example, uh, April Wenzel, who uh, she created a, a compassion coding, uh, compassionate coding, um, and uh, uh, she you know trains people how to how to be better uh, like humans, really. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, you know we'll because this is such a sensitive thing, we, we're gonna try to enforce it as best as we can. Uh, that's part of the, maybe something in the code of conduct needs a bit of uh, uh, updates on the forcing section, um, uh, but, uh, uh, but uh, we'll work on that. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, I would really like if people here could um, try to be as, uh, 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 you know, practice their empathy as much as possible, right? Um, try to be understanding what other people are, um, um, are going through um, because uh, any of these things, um, you know, takes a lot of time to learn. And, um, um, and so I was, like last week, I had my first meeting of what is called the, uh, the Community Advisory Board for the Bioconductor um, project. Um, uh, people nominated me to be a part of that board. Um, and so a lot of the problems there are like about how you can uh, facilitate uh, uh, new users or new developers and helping them understand the things we already know, um, or some of us know, um, uh, to some level, right? Um, like, um, I still ask a lot of questions online. And so that's why you'll see uh, you know, you try to be as nice as possible, make it easy for other people to help you. That's why we spent time two weeks ago looking at this Reprex package for um, information on how to ask help. Um, and right now, uh, I'm actually updating my own packages. Uh, I'm in the process of doing that, but let me just show you one of them that I'm currently doing this. And But like, if you go to GitHub, for example, you find the uh, uh, the source of something you can maybe say like oh I want to say like a new bug report or feature request um, and I made a template that will like provide links of like um, that will make it easier for people to then ask better questions right so that's the idea of this stuff here um, and we'll we might have to revise some of this later. Now, um, earlier this year in January, we had a meeting with several of you here. Uh, we brainstormed on some topics. People were interested in, in learning a bit more. Um, and so I guess today we're really going back to the beginning, which is our studio. Um, and um, our studio and R, um, really. Um, okay. So, but uh, I want, you know, there's many ways to teach R and things like that. Um, from looking at people here, I think most of you already use it to some level, uh, but um, I'm gonna focus on, I'm, gonna focus on, I'm hearing some feedback. Um, I'm gonna meet some of you. Okay, so. Uh, all right, so uh, let's see. So we looked at the Liber ISAT schedule, um, the club website, um, and then the code of conduct there. 
Um, oh, let me add April's Twitter in case you're interested in learning more about what she does. Cool. Um, so a bit of what we're going to be doing today is uh, um, is uh, just navigating R and R studio. Um, and for that, uh, I'll talk about two of the of two of the R packages that I like to use, which are use this and here. Um, and so for this, it's ideal if you have R 3.6 uh, or near installed in your computer. If you have like R 3.5, that should work. But um, if you have older versions of R, then this might not work there. Um, next, we'll also need a recent version of our studio. Um, their version numbers are a bit um, um, complicated. Like, for example, the latest is 1.2.5042. I don't know where the 042 comes from, but um, or what that represents. But that's the one I can see available right now. Um, cool. So, why we use R, right? Um, um, R is open source. It was made by two people in academia, um, Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman. Um, and they wanted to do statistical analysis. At the time, uh, um, S was a pretty popular language. S was developed by Bell Labs, the Bell's Laboratories, which was uh, late, you know, later became part of AT&T. Um, uh, but S um, uh, had a license and stuff like that. And so they made R to be free. And one of the main reasons why it's so popular is that yes, it's free, but also it's easy to expand. So if I go to the CRAN website, um, um, there's a lot of packages here. So we can, uh, on the left side, look at packages. Packages are these little, um, uh, pieces of software that people make and share with other with others um, and so let's see other table of packages sort of by name um, and there's like there's tons of them there's like um, over 10,000 packages in CRAN and they do many different things um, and uh, the growth has been kind of exponential and so uh, I don't think anyone really knows what all the packages in R do uh, so, um, um, like for example, this one, the analysis of biological data. This might be about a book, just from the name of it, but I don't know. Um, so that's why we have our club because there's a lot of like pieces of software that people share, and they could be useful for our work, and they're free to use most of them, um, um, and it's easy to expand. It also it's frequently updated, right? Um, so unlike other uh, statistical solutions that are uh, supported by a company, let's, you know, for example, look at SAS or Stata, um, uh, R is always like um, use at your own risk, right? That means that no one is guaranteeing that the computation is precisely done. Um, no one is guaranteeing that it doesn't have any bugs, um, all of this. And so that means that uh, you end up interacting with the people writing the software frequently if you end up finding some problem that you uh, need them to fix. Um, that's why there's a big community of people around R too. Um, cool, so the next part is R Studio. R Studio um, is a company that has existed for maybe about 10 years now. Um, and they have made a lot of, um, good things for the community itself. One of the things they made is this, um, their um, desktop um, application that is really like a specialized version of a browser. And this is what we're gonna be using today. So if you could open your R Studio, um, uh, we'll uh, start um, doing some of the things. So you should have the, ideally the use this package installed because uh, um, uh, we'll use this uh, in a little bit. 
So if you open our studio right now, have a particular uh, former session open. But what we're going to do right now is imagine that you're starting a new, a new project, a new analysis, right? Um, or it could be as, uh, you know, uh, an idea that you have and you're just um, trying to help someone um, with it. And so one way of organizing your code is to use what is called the R Studio project. So I'm going to go to the very top left of my window. Um, it might be a very really small font for you, but um, under file, it says new project. So I'll click on that. Um, and what we want to do here is to start from a new directory. We're going to start over. Uh, there's all, you know, there's more options, but imagine that you're starting from scratch. Uh, and um, there's gives us several options. I'm going to choose the one that says new project at the very top. Uh, and then it asks for a directory name. So, um, I'm going to call it rstats underscore club underscore intro. And I'll save it um, in my desktop. And I'm going to open the project and open it in a new session. Uh, that way I can, you know, hide this, the other things I had from before. Cool. Uh, um, if you have any questions at any point, uh, Zoom has this um, utility where you can raise your hand and uh, on the middle of my screen, it will pop a message for me. Uh, and then I'll know that you have a question. Um, so I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this stuff now. Um, just making my browser window uh, bigger. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, I already tweaked a little bit my configuration of our studio, uh, but in my case, I have a very uh, large window over here on the left that has three tabs. Um, um, uh, three tabs, one of them is called console, another one is terminal, another one is jobs. We won't be using all of them. Um, we'll mostly be using the console today. Um, you can see that it tells me that I am on, um, on my desktop, at the folder R Stats Club intro. On the right side, it has this files uh, panel and it's telling me what files we have in that directory. And right now we only have the name of the project that we chose. In, in my case, it was R Stats underscore, underscore club underscore intro dot R project. Um, so that's the only file I have there. Um, uh, and it has a help, a viewer, uh, packages, things like that. Um, so the very first thing we could we could do is to go to file new file um our script um and that automatically makes uh my window on the left a two a two pane window and so it's untitled for now i'm going to save it as um, um i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to copy call it capital R. I'm going to save it as, um, let's call it like, um, I'm going to call it like um, 01-test.r. Cool. All right, so at this point, um, uh, I can now start writing code on my R script over here. Um, that way, uh, this is like the, how you document what you're thinking, what you're doing. Um, this is some, something you can easily share with other people code, um, interactive output and stuff like that is, uh, is great for you to look at, but, um, but it won't be great for other people to try to reproduce the same things you did, uh, to run the same stuff you did in the Zach and get the exact same results. Right. So, um, Let's say, for example, here that I want uh, to create a variable. I'm going to call it x. Um, 
Um, now in R, the assignment is done with the arrow symbol. Um, and R studio has a lot of shortcuts. Right now I use one uh, unconsciously, uh, uh, but let's see what some of these are. So we go to the help panel on the very top. Um, let's go to keyboard shortcuts help, which is uh, on Mac is um, um, Alt Shift K. And so this shows a lot of stuff on your screen, right? There's a ton of different uh, shortcuts. Um, um, the one I want to use is for assignment. So the arrow assignment. Um, I, I'm trying to remember where it lives in this whole um, 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 in this whole um, section of, of help files. Um, I don't know if any of you see it on your own window. Um, console terminal B. Oh, here it is. Insert assignment operator, which is um, Alt and the dash key on, on my Mac computer. Um, alt and dash. Um, so if I press that alt and dash on my computer, that's how I get the little arrow there for assignment. Um, and so I'm gonna just you know call it uh, my name, Leonardo. I'm putting it in quotes. Now, uh, a lot of you I think already know this part, but um, uh, if I want to, uh, one way I can, you know, evaluate my code is I can select it, right click, copy, then go to the console, right click, paste, then press enter, right? Uh, but that's a lot of work. Um, and so um, here we see under the, the, on the menu has a run option and run, it might show really small on your screen. It says run the current line or selection. And the shortcut for that is on Mac is um, uh, command enter. Um, and we can also go see it on the help, um, keyboard shortcuts help. Um, so let's look for command enter. Um, under execute here, uh, run selected lines, that's a command enter in the middle of my screen, right? So if, we, if I press command enter, that uh, runs the code automatically, right? Um, and I can even have an empty line and press command enter and we'll like keep doing that. Uh, this is useful because if you end up using the, the cluster, uh, you might actually be working not on the console, but on the terminal. And the shortcut for that is fairly similar. Um, but uh, we won't get into that part today. Right. So here I have that code. Now, something that RCDU makes really nice is that uh, it auto completes information. So um, let's say I want to use my here package. One way of using it is to use here colon colon, and you can already see that after typing colon colon, it's trying me to give me options of what I can use for autocomplete. Right? In my case, I already know that I want the here function. Right? So I could just actually type H, and then um, then it selects here as the top option, and I can just press Tab, and it will autocomplete and open the parentheses for me. Uh, I'll just uh, run this function. And what you can see, what it does here is that it, um, it gives me the path on my computer to where we are for this particular project. And why is this useful? Uh, because um, this way I can make code that other people can run um, and I don't need to give them a uh, path that, you know, that won't work on their computers. Um, uh, a common mistake you see is that people will have lines like this set WD on their on their scripts, and the problem with having this on, their, on your script is that 
unless you have the exact same file structure like I have, you cannot run the code unless you modify it, right? Um, so this, the here, here package, I mean the here package and the here function um, are really useful for this. Because for example, I can ask here, here, what's under the R directory. Um, for that, I wanna use a dir function and I'm gonna evaluate with command enter, right? And so I can see here, it tells me that I have the 01-test.r file. Um, um, and uh, like, you know, later on, you could be, you know, load data and say like, for example, let's read, uh, read that file. So, um, I, when I uh, create a new variable called test underscore core, uh, code, I'm going to read it with the function read lines. For that, I need to give the um, path to a file. So I'm going to say, for example, here, here, r, I want the 01 test.r file, right? Um, so once I ran that, it was able to read the file um, into R. Um, and this is code that if I give you access to this, um, this directory and you uh, save it anywhere in your computer, you'll still be able to run it. How does this actually work here? Here, It looks for um, uh, the location of where you have a Git repository or you have a .r proj file. Uh, that's how it found the root directory of the project. And this is why like uh, one of the reasons like organizing your code in projects can be um, useful because then uh, you can easily share them with other people and they'll be portable. Um, okay, so that's that here here function. Um, now, um, something else that we can, that can um, make your code easier for other people is to include information about reproducibility. Um, and so for that, let's uh, keep editing the file here. So we already use the here package, right? So actually, I could actually load it at the top by using the library function and then putting quotes the name of the package. Um, library here. Um, and, and why do we, you want to do this? Uh, you want to put any library, uh, any dependencies that you might have at the very top of, of your script. Um, this is useful because then um, if people don't have the dependencies, the R um, script will fail immediately instead of having running for like say half an hour, an hour or several days. Um, um, so you wanna put all your dependencies up at the very top. Um, right now here I have another dependency, right? I'm depending on a, on, on a, on a file. So maybe I'll put that at the top too. Um, um, so this is like a file dependency. Um, and over here, I wanna put like R package depend, depend, then. Um, so I think it was, did anyone raise your hand now? So I think someone sent a message in the chat. Yeah, I tried to oh. chat just like, um, I'm getting an error. There's no package called here. Yeah, so I don't think you've ran them these two lines, this line of code. Okay, it solves the package. Right. okay, got it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, I can make this a bit nicer. So let me just, um, uh, uh, can we just copy in some code that I know that works for this? Uh, this scenario, and I'm gonna make my script even, even more friendly. Um, Um, so I added here a bit of complicated code that basically checks whether the package you have exists or not. 
And, and then if it doesn't exist, it installs it. And then it like actually loads it. Um, so uh, we don't typically do this uh, because um, um, once you start using R uh, frequently, you'll notice that um, um, that uh, yeah, this is such a this is a common scenario where you run code that someone else gave you and it gives you a message. Let me just make a uh, an example here. Library view, and it gives you an error like this. So that's the error that uh, Lana uh, posted. And it's just that instead of saying Leo here, it says here, right? Um, that's why we want to have all these library statements at the very top, um, such that people can notice if their package is failing. I mean, their script doesn't have all the, their computer doesn't have all the dependencies that they need, right? So, oops. Let me just uh, comment that out. Now I'm going to teach you a new shortcut here. Uh, I want to. I don't actually want to run libraries uh, parentheses uh, quotes Leo, uh, so I want to comment it out. Um, in R, comments are started with a pound sign um, at the top of the line, um, and I could you know easily type pound and then space right, and that's enough. But uh, there's a shortcut here. And that comes from the little one that is called code tools. Where you click on the little one um, at the top of the um, um, of the panel for the for your script, there's uh, an option here called comment slash uncomment lines, which the shortcut is uh, shift command C. I use this a lot, um, so uh, you know, you'll, you probably will end up remembering this shortcut shift command C. And if you type that, it automatically commits stuff. Uh, that line that you have selected, you can even select multiple lines in, in case you want to comment on or uncomment things really fast. Why is this useful? Um, so um, let's say I want to add to my script um, date the script was run. I comment there. So I could say sys.time, which is a function that will tell me the current time. Um, I'll evaluate it. I see output over here. I can go select it, right click, copy under my output, right click, paste. And then I can uh, press the uh, shortcut, Command Shift C to comment that output. Now this, I only do this when it's, um, an output that is important for other people to 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 check later on um, that will make their lives easier to understand what the code was or some some numbers that you might need in a paper later on uh, so for example if you're doing a if you're printing a two by two table of your results let's say you're comparing uh, one method versus another uh, versus a gold standard you try to determine um, like um, error rates um, you know you could do that and put it on your script um, there's other tools like Art Markdown that, are, that make nice reports, but this is what I do uh, when I don't have the time for that, uh, for the nicer things. Um, and if you see any of my code, you'll notice that I have a lot of comments like this, and that's how I, 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 I make them. Okay, so this is actually, this is all building up to another package. Um, so I didn't actually put it here on the installations. But let's, I'm gonna copy um, my lines of code from before, paste them, and now I wanna edit them for another package, right? Uh, you actually see that the, the package name is uh, in three different locations, right? So we're gonna use, this is like um, one of the magic shortcuts in, um, um, and in our studio, and um, I I re I use it right now. I don't know if you notice what happened. It's a tiny thing on the screen. So what I did was um, now I have 
a flashing little pipe here at the beginning of the word here on line five, at the beginning of the word here on line six, and in the beginning of the word here on line seven. Um, this will enable me to then um, use the delete key on my keyboard and then type a new uh, anything I want to type, and it will be typed in all three locations at the same time. The magic shortcut for this is on, on Mac, it's Alt, Command, Click, left click. So I'll type that actually. So let's say here. Um, keyboard shortcuts that we've been using. It's um, Alt plus dash. Assignment arrow. I'm putting the versions uh, for Windows too. Uh, that I remember, but um, but. Um, um, I might have some of them wrong. I think a command and control are interchange between Windows and Mac, but um, um, I wouldn't, you know, be, I would need to double check uh, with my PC computer to be completely sure. Um, so. Um, I forget um, what the correct term for this is, but like the, I'm going to call it like piping uh, locations. Um, um, cool. So this is particularly useful because a lot of what we end up doing is copy pasting code, uh, and um, uh, you know I could have easily. Uh, Go into the first location, type session info, then go to the next one, also type session info, and go to the third one and type session info. But then this is error prone. I intentionally made a mistake here in line six. I typed three S's instead of two, right? Um, and so, uh, a lot of these tools are about like um, uh, <laughs> someone is selecting all the keyword shortcuts. <laughs> uh, uh, cool. So you know that's an error prone way of, of editing things. Um, okay. So what does what does this session info package do? I'm going to evaluate it with command enter. Um, uh, this package is going to is actually the package that I use the most. Uh, I use it in every single script that I make. And that's because I like to do, um, um, uh, I like to include these lines at the end of every script that I make. I like to include a print statement for saying reproduci reproducibility information colon. I like to print, the current time, so I know when the script was run. Proc.time, this is a function that tells you how long a process has been running. So right now it's been running, uh, I've had my R open for 1300 seconds. Um, I also changed the width of the in a print window. And then finally, I call the session info, session underscore info function. Um, this is useful because all this output, I typically just select all of it. Uh, this is where I struggle sometimes. 
um, uh, command terminal. And select all of this output, right click, copy, paste it underneath, right click, paste. Uh, now I select all of those lines. Then I comment them with Command Shift C. What is this information? Um, it is all information about what R version I was using, what computer system I was using, uh, the date, um, um, what R packages I had actually loaded in my session, where I installed them from. So this one is from CRAN, version R 3.6, where we assert that package. But for example, the color out package is installed from GitHub and it, is, it actually gives me the specific uh, version of GitHub that I installed it from. All this information is uh, really useful for you later on. If you, if you, let's say you have the exact same code, but it gives you different results across versions of R or versions of packages. Or um, so then you can like uh, try to identify what was the culprit package um, or, or um, code change. And because we are doing a lot of like development work, um, that's why I like to use the GitHub because that will give me this exact precise version of the pack of the GitHub package that um, I was using. Um, uh, and so all this information is like the basics of any script that I make, um, regardless of where I run it. Um, so we're using the here package for dealing with paths, um, uh, such that your, uh, uh, your paths will be reproducible for other people and easy to share. I'm using the session info package for, um, for reproducibility. And here we have a bit of examples of how I use this, right? Now, um, another package that has become incredibly useful for me is the use this package. So I'm actually gonna copy and paste lines five to seven. Um, right click copy, uh, enter. Right click paste. I'm gonna use the shortcut, which was Alt Command Left Click. You can actually um, select um, multiple things. Uh, then I press the delete key. I'm gonna press um, Command Z just to do. And uh, just so you can see it slowly, I'm gonna delete. Here, session info, I'm gonna use the use this package. Right. Um, cool. I executed that uh, those lines of code by pressing the command enter uh, shortcut here. Now, use this. Use this has a lot of things, right? So let's see what uses does. The way you can check the information for a package is you can use a help, then you use a function, uh, specifying package equals and equals the name of the package. So in this case, it's use this. I'm evaluating with command enter. And now we're using the help panel on the right side. Um, and, uh, you know, I actually prefer to open it in a new window. So the help panel on our studio has a little like little browser with an arrow that, uh, that if you mouse over it will say show in new window. So I'll click on that. And um, I like this version a bit more. Um, so use this has a lot of functions here. Um, um, some of them are a bit more useful than others, but like the idea of use this was to make it easy for, um, for people to include a lot of, um, uh, a lot of templates and things like that on their pack, on their code and package and stuff like that. Um, so, just to exemplify one of them, um, uh, or I mean, let's add two of them. Let's add a code of conduct to our project. So for that, we can use the use this use code of conduct function. I'm gonna emulate that with command enter. And so 
what this does is that um, it detects which is a project we're working on. So it detected that I'm in um, desktop uh, slash our stats club in crew. And it wrote a file called codeofconduct.md. If I go to files now, here I can see that we have a codeofconduct.md file. Um, and so this is a template code of conduct. You need to uh, insert like the contact method for enforcement. But this is like um, something you can use for um, you're making a project that other people will interact with. Uh, uh, you could also say like, oh, maybe uh, maybe people have questions, right? Um, and so, oops, um, like, uh, um, you might want to specify like uh, information for asking questions. So use this has another template called use um, issue. Uh, just tidy issue template. So if I use that, I, I run this, it created the hidden dot GitHub directory. Um, and um, it added that to a hidden file called dot um, ignore. And inside this dot GitHub directory, it created the issue um, underscore template.md file. Right. So Um, so I don't see it right now on the right pane because I, uh, I need to actually uh, refresh the window. So I exited and entered again. And now I see the dot GitHub directory there. If I open it, then I can see issue underscore template and this issue uh, underscore template dot MD file. And so this just gives like a brief, um, um, message for people to read before they ask you questions. So it's like, it says like, oh, you should ask questions in Stack Overflow or the community R Studio website. And uh, you should also include a minimal reproducible example made with a reprex package. Um, so this is just information for make it, to make it easier for other people to help you um, help them in the future. Um, so this, the use this package is particularly useful if you're gonna uh, develop um, uh, your own package. Um, uh, but it also has other things that might be helpful for you, like setting up Git um, and things like that, that we don't have the time to go into today. Um, so a lot of this is, you would say like, this is not your typical R introduction, right? Your typical R introduction is about like, um, uh, like the different classes of objects um, and things like that. This is more of um, uh, a workshop that people like to teach called, I mean, the people that Jenny Bryan and Jim Hester designed and started teaching called What They Forgot to Teach You About R. Um, and so I want to put it on the links here. And uh, the this workshop and the ideas of it basically came to be because um, uh, the, the um, individuals at our studio and other teachers were teaching people how to do some advanced R um, work, but then everyone had um, different backgrounds of R because everyone, you know, um, learn by themselves and like everyone does what they find on the web, right? Like, so uh, if you look at uh, code on the web is very common to find. Oops, not this. Um, my RST. Mm. This one. Oh, here. Sorry. Um, it's very common to find um, um, lines of code like uh, like the set WD, right? Um, Uh, so this, uh, let's say over here in my comment. Um, 
and comment, uh, comment it out. So uh, set WB and stuff like that is very common to find uh, other other people's code, um, but it makes uh, the code not shareable. Um, okay, so Jenny, Brian, and Jean, uh, you know they they they've been teaching this workshop. They're in the process of making a book, a, a book website, which is the one I linked to, but it's not complete. For example, if we go to how to name files. It says like, oh, we need to adapt this. Um, this presentation into into a path, right? But for example, something that we did right now was um, um, practice safe paths, uh, and there's a bit more motivation on why to do so in this in this uh, um, in this uh, chapter of their book. Um, um, now. Um, um, Jade Keenan asked about uh, uh, installation, and so they spend a lot of time about. Oops, uh, they spend a lot of time in the workshop learning how to install things, um, uh, um, and so their website, I don't think, is very really complete, fully complete for this right now. But like they have a here, uh, an image showing exactly how our what the R program actually does. Um, uh, it's a fairly complicated bash script actually R. Um, if I go to my terminal, uh, I'm gonna type which R just to find where it is. Um, and I'm gonna type more um, just to read it. And uh, I'm just gonna make this window bigger. So you can actually see it, but um, if we look into it, it has a bunch of stuff and it's fairly complicated. Um, and so that complication is illustrated in this image over here, right? Um, um, so we, we won't get into that part, but um, it's actually, it can be actually help, uh, fairly useful for people to understand some components of it, in particular, the, the R profile, because um, here you can do really useful things like always load a specific set of packages, always set the width to let's say 120 characters instead of the default of 80, um, and things like that. Um, so, uh, if you actually wanted to edit this, you can use the function um, uh, edit the R profile. You can use a function use this edit underscore r uh, profile. Um, so this function over here, if you use it, um, uh, it opens the R profile um, on your R studio. Uh, so you don't actually need to know the, all the details of where this lives and things like that. I actually have um, a bit of a complicated um, R profile, but um, you know that's uh, uh, not for everyone at this point. Um, something else that I actually started to learn yesterday is there's this other package. Uh, so I'm going to add it to the top um, that could be useful to you, which is called. Uh, so I'm going to use again my shortcut, which is Alt Command Left Click. Um, it's called Styler. And so this package over here, Styler, what it does is um, we can actually like uh, style code. And so I want to use this as Styler, style underscore file. We, I want to style this particular script, which I want to use the here, here to say it's R. Zero one dash test dot r. Um, um, I'm going to use the tidyverse uh, style. So uh, here, if I run this code, it actually will edit my own code. 
um, uh, and it's going to use the tidyverse uh, style of coding. Um, and so here it, it actually tells me like, oh, you have one file that changed. And I don't know if you noticed the differences, but I'm going to do it with command Z. Um, and so just over here, for example, I'm using single quotes. If I do it, if I, um, uh, the, the restyling actually changes all the single quotes, to double quotes. Um, uh, I didn't have this curly brackets at the beginning. It added them there. It like, in, um, it moved the, the code to where it thinks it will be more humanly readable um, and all these things. Um, so um, uh, this, the, the argument that I read about using um, a predefined style is that then everyone, if everyone uses the same style, then it makes it easier to, you know, to read everyone else's code. Um, and, uh, uh, this is you know, something that I think could be of a lot of interest for uh, making it easier. You basically want to make things easier for other people to work with you, right? Um, and so this Styler package could be fairly, um, uh, I think I'm going to start um, uh, telling people to use it more and more. Um, and there's ways of doing this automatically, um, but uh, we won't get into that. Um, so uh, I think this is plenty enough about um, R and our studio. Uh, sorry, one thing I wanted to also mention, because I, I see that we're close to time, is the cheat sheets. Um, um, so this is a website by R studio um, where they have compiled uh, um, and like put a lot of effort into documenting some parts of, of what people uh, do frequently. So I'm gonna use that, go and look at the data visualization cheat sheet, for example. Um, um, I need to download it. So these cheat sheets are um, fairly use, useful because um, we already saw that there's over like 10,000 R packages out there and each of them has its own set of functions. And so they made this um, these cheat sheets for some of the mostly used um, packages. And they're um, a way of uh, explaining the documentation of what these packages do and for reminding yourself like what are some of the options and main functions you might be interested in using. Um, so I highly recommend looking at this website. Um, it's almost like if you wanted to, you know, cram and study before an exam, uh, but made professionally, <laughs> right? Um, so um, I don't remember, you know, I remember some functions and, um, and a lot of times I end up copy and pasting code from uh, from other places, but um, uh, this is um, a fairly good uh, thing to have around you. Um, people print them and put them in binders, um, and uh, and uh, there's multiple versions of them. That's why I recommend going to this website because here you can find the latest versions of all these cheat sheets. Because uh, if you just Google them, you Google image them. You will, you'll find them, but they might not be updated. Here it tells us, for example, these were updated January 17th, and this is not a random date. This is just before the R Studio conference 20, in 2020. <laughs> so every year before the conference in 2020, they make sure to update them. Um, some of them, like this one, was updated after the conference, updated February 16th. <laughs> right. um, um, and in particular, you might be interested in the RStudio IDE cheat sheet, which has, uh, oh, I need to download it. I'm gonna put it in here. Okay. 
Mm. Mm. Studio IDE um, has a lot of the things we were using. We use the, the wand over here um, at some point. Um, um, but there's a lot of stuff that our studio provides that we didn't even get to talk about um, in the session. And a lot of it is dependent on, on what you're doing. Um, we got into, uh, into new projects uh, um, and that's a great way of, of version controlling. Uh, the second page of the cheat sheet has a lot of the shortcuts uh, in a much more easy to see version. So I should have loaded this earlier and having in bold, uh, some of the main things. So we use the insert arrow, which was alt um, uh, option dash in Mac, and I guess it was alt dash in Windows. Um, on comment lines, um, uh, we use that one a lot. Um, um, and there's a lot of uh, ways that you can navigate to code, um, also using uh, shortcuts. Uh, we, we use the um, the um, run current line selection one, command enter. Um, one that I actually like quite a bit is um, the uh, command up arrow or, or search command history. So I'm just gonna show you that one. If you're in the console, you press command up arrow, you can see uh, what you typed in the past. And this might be helpful if you just want to rerun the same thing again. So maybe I just want to restyle again. Um, and in this case, like nothing changed. Right? Um, um, so that's particularly useful there. Um, cool. So I think that's it for today. Um, uh, um, but those are like how you can get started with uh, making a project for your um, your your work. Um, uh, we've covered a little bit in other sessions how to do the Gypsy and GitHub setup, um, uh, but uh, uh, there's a space in between also for RC and GitHub on your laptop um, um, that we we uh, we don't have currently planned for because. Um, we think that most of you will be interested in, in learning how to make plots, which you plot to. So we'll do that next session. Um, uh, I, I imagine that people would also be interested in a bioconductor overview, of how to like find stuff in bioconductor, how to deal with packages from bioconductor, which is different from the regular CRAM packages. Um, we use a lot, some packages called summarize experiment and single cell experiment. Um, so this can be helpful for some uh, people also, but this is, this is, these are really useful if you're doing RNA-seq work or, um, or anything related to that type of work like uh, whole genome by subject sequencing work also. Um, uh, Lima is one of the most uh, commonly used bioconductor packages. And we use it a lot for linear models with genomic data. So we're, we were also thinking of going over Lima. Um, now you might have other suggestions um, and so please let Nina and me know uh, and we'll see where to add them because if a lot of you suggest the same thing we can always move around stuff right um, uh, if, if you're struck like because I'm, I'm aware that several of you are learning how to use R for the first time um, and so uh, uh, you have um, more in your mind what what you know what you need right and then it's harder it's a lot harder for me and nina to anticipate what you need at this point because uh, um uh like in my case i might have forgotten how what were the challenges earlier you know, because i i did this a while back right uh, um just to complete uh the the spreadsheet there's also some quick notes quick start notes here from Andrew that way I copy pasted here. And then uh, some gypsy notes that I also paste that I wrote um, for uh, on Slack a while uh, earlier this month, um, uh, if you're using gypsy. Um, um, and 
if you're using Jitsi, we have like we already have two widgets here that could be useful um, to get started. Okay. Um, cool. Um, are there any questions? Leo, do you do you and Andrew use the same style? Um, so this styler package, right. uh, I just found about it yesterday. Oh, okay. Uh, because um, why don't you just tell us what style to use? How's that? Yeah, so uh, I'm actually planning on making a function to do this because uh, let me just show it. Uh, the way I actually had to use it is a bit more complicated. Um, uh, uh, so I actually had to modify one of the internal functions of the styler package to run it how I want it to run. Um, because this is how like uh, the bioconductor style is. And so I'm trying to use this package called styler that people made for the tidyverse, but I wanna, um, you know, uh, use it for my purposes with bioconductor. Um, um, so I might make a little function such that people don't need to like run all this stuff. This is fairly complicated uh, to look at. Um, um, so we just chose the tidyverse style that wouldn't work with bioconductor or would just be not as obvious what you're doing? Yeah, it's fairly close. So like, that's why for today I, I uh, uh, where is it? Um, that's why for today, this command that I ran at the, at the end um, is fairly useful. If, you, if you're doing this, you're doing a lot more than anyone else. <laughs> um, and so uh, I'll post all of this code um, on, on the Google Doc after the session, such that people can look at the exact lines of code that I use and stuff like that. Um, um, well, what I would like to do is, is just utilize your experience. So I think most of us, if you, set, if you and Andrew settled on a particular style and then you fixed the grammar, you could just use it and, you know, probably want to. Yeah. Right? yeah, but I want to make it easy for people to do that, right? Yeah. That's why I'm going to, I'm likely going to make a tiny R package that has some of this stuff. And maybe I'll teach people then how to use this, like, okay. this new R package perfect. for that. Perfect. Perfect. Um, right now, Right now, we just you know start with this styler. Got it. Because um, there's there's a couple R packages that do this type of thing, and I was looking at them, um, and some of them have errors, um, and this one seemed to be the best one. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, like I mean, let's say I guess, like, I mean I mentioned earlier, like everyone has like strong opinions once they become like, developers and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm not trying to force people to use this, but I think it would be highly uh, recommended for people to use it. Right. Um, um, cool. All right. I want to stop recording. One second. Let me just cut this. Um,